shut up compressor. Duke's models and welcome to part two of the trumpeter p38 build so in part one i basically got my first baby steps into the kit which involve a lot of internals in the booms like the allison engines and the gear bays and the gear struts and the turbochargers and basically i got to a point where i need to start hitting these things with some paint not the Allisons, because they're going to be completely hidden, but a bunch of the other things. And so I've got some MRP fine surface primer popped into my guns PS290. And basically, it's now time to go ahead and start making some things black. So for these things, they're basically invisible once you close up the boom and install it to the wings. But I'm going to add a little bit in here just in case some of this shit is visible. So you get the general gist. We're priming shit. Okay, so now that the various gear bay and gear strut parts have been primed with MRP surface primer, it's time to make them silver. Ignore all the interior green callouts in the instructions. They are wrong. At least uh, as far as every single bit of evidence I have ever seen, which shows P38 gear bays in silver slash bare metal. So to get there, I'm not going to go full hog on like some sort of crazy chrome metallic type thing. They're gear bays on what is going to be a Mediterranean theater of operations P38 that saw a lot of action. So they're going to be fairly beat up, fairly weathered. So I would rather do more of like a silver slash flat aluminum. And to get there, I'm going to be using this Moto T023 engine slash matte aluminum. Now, if you haven't heard of Moto, that makes sense. Uh, they are from Taiwan. They are similar-ish, depending on which pot you get, to Gaia Notes or MRP. They spray fantastically. I'm a big fan of some of their paints. I'm trying to branch out and try some others. I really like their MK12 Black Primer. And I like this stuff, at least from what I've sprayed of it so far. But this is my first time spraying it in anger at an actual kit part. So let's see how this goes. I've got way too much air pressure. Okay. This may not be enough air pressure. So in my experience, this stuff kind of looks like shit going down. It gets better as it dries up. Yeah, you can tell that the surface on this thing isn't the greatest, 
doesn't matter because it's a gear bay. But overall, I really like the effect that this T023 gives. Got a good amount of shine, but it's not super overpowering. Nothing like experimenting on a live build, huh? So I'm putting some Gaia Notes T09 metallic thinner into it. I probably put way too much. Okay, let's see if this impacts it at all. I feel like a barbarian spraying with this PS290. Yeah, I do like the way that thinner helps it along though. Hot diggity. Okay, so once everything is all sprayed up and kind of quickly slapped together, here's what we have. So I think that will do nicely for further weathering. Let's cure up just a little bit longer and then we'll hit the next step. Okay, so now that the base silver is sprayed down, it's time to start getting to work on some details. First up, I'm gonna go ahead and handle the brake lines. So for these, I'm using a mix of Vallejo Gray Green with a bit of black thrown in to darken it up a bit. Yay. One benefit of this trapped landing gear arrangement is I can actually get in here and paint this thing a bit easier because I've got this whole big platform to hold. Okay, next up it's time for some pin wash action with some ABT 502 Starship Filth and some VMS Universal Weathering Carrier. So combine a little bit of Starship Filth and some Weathering Carrier in a tattoo ink cup here. And basically we're gonna use this to pick out various details in the gear bays and on the gear struts. Now, if you're wondering why I'm not going hard on adding a bunch of detail and shit like that to the gear base, basically it comes down to my law of conservation of fucks. And detailing gear bays and adding all the wiring and whatnot takes a lot of fucks out of me. And I have a feeling I'm going to need them down the line on this kit. So I'd rather save them for the stuff that matters down the road. Okay, so you get a sense of what's going on. Let me go ahead and wrap the rest of this up and we'll come back to clean it up and move on to the next step. 
Okay, so here is where the gear base stand after getting a little bit of a pin wash. I'm gonna let that sort of set for a few minutes before I move on to the next thing. Okay, next up, we're gonna do something that I first saw MIG do several years ago, and I gave it a shot and wasn't really impressed, and so I kind of walked away from it. And then recently, uh, John Bonani has kind of popularized it again, and it is chipping enamel weathering products. So first of all, I'm gonna lay down some heavy chipping effects. I tried this on the fuel tank, or the drop tank of the P40 I just finished, and I really liked it. And so I was curious to see how it would work on, whoa, let's turn the pressure down a little bit. I was curious to see how it would work on like a silver or a bare metal surface, because I'm considering it for the overall weathering but I figure the gear bay is a good place to try it out. Okay, so the hairspray's had a few minutes to dry up and I've gone ahead and mixed up my colors for this and I'm gonna be using Guns Mr. Weathering Color grayish brown right here. A mix of that and their multi-gray in the middle and a mix of multi-gray and multi-black over here, all thinned with some Mr. Weathering Color Thinner. So all kinds of nice, fun enamel products to play around with today. Okay, let's move these over here so I don't knock them over. All right, let's start spraying some grayish brown. As you can see, it's very filter-like. Not heavy at all. So just a comparison, here is the standard, and here is the shit that's gotten its treatment. I love these uh, little mounting posts on the back, because they make great handles for tweezers. Next up for some variety, it's going to be the gray mixed with the grayish brown. They're so just basically going for a randomish pattern with the gray brown here. And finally, the gray-black. Okay, time for some fun with chipping. Because it's so thin, this stuff chips really easily, which is super useful.
So you're getting the gist of this. Let's go ahead and knock out and gear strut. So that's really effective on the gear struts. I think more so than on the gear bay walls. So with that, I'm running out of time on this memory card. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause, finish this up, and we'll be back. Okay, so after the Moto T023, after Starship Filth pin washing, after Hairspray, and after a plethora of guns Mr. Weathering Color airbrushed in and chipped away, here is where the gear base stand. And I am pretty happy with this. It definitely seems to convey a war-weary gear bay. Lots of shit kicked up, lots of shit sort of adhered to surfaces that are oily and otherwise covered in smuts. And I definitely want to do some more to this, but I feel like this is a great base. And I feel like the gear struts are also kind of the right amount of dirty, but also shiny in places. So, sweet. I'm going to go ahead and let these sit overnight. Let those enamel products kind of cure up. And we will move on to the next phase. Okay, so moving on from the gear bays and gear struts, it's time to get back to the engine, nacelle, engine boom, whatever, construction efforts. And I've gone ahead and taken delivery of an Edward photo etch set to kind of kick things up a little bit. As you can see I've got a little bit of mesh down in here, yay. And I've installed this little door. Now the kit doors, yeesh, <laughs> you can see the flash in there. Uh, they're not great. Removing them is also not the greatest most fun proposition, but I think it's worth it in the end. This looks much better, even though the plastic itself is kind of janky. So, just to walk you through what removing these fun things look like. Basically, yeah, I've got the JLC saw. It's useful for some things. It's only slightly useful here because this thing is so close to the surface in so many different angles getting in there with something this big is a bit dicey. It will come into use, but uh, I prefer to use the back end of a number 11 blade, and yes, this one has seen better days. Fortunately for this purpose, that doesn't matter. Basically, you just wanna score this line, and it takes a bit of doing. Go slow, because it's easy to slip and then like scratch the whole fucking thing, so just, Nice and gentle. Basically let the blade do all the work for you. As you get in there a little bit, it won't uh, want to jump so easily because it's already digging itself a nice trench to play in. But the back of number 11 blades, I'm telling you, they're some of the best cutting tools out there. Why am I doing this with the whole thing taped together? Basically because the mesh is in here and it's only glued down to one side and I don't want to bend it. This also gives me something I can squeeze, uh, which helps because otherwise I'd have my finger right on the inside of this plastic and as the knife starts to bite through, that's not a great thing. It's decent for now. We're going to swing up around to the edges here. This thing, just to score a line, basically, is all we're doing. That's not even as close as I want. Come on. Alright, I 
think I've got enough of a line there that I can come in here now with the jail seesaw. As I learned on the other ones, it's better to push here because as you pull back, you can scratch up the area in front and we don't want to do that. This is where the fun happens. Doink. I really wish Trumpeter hadn't put these in here like this. It would have uh, made everybody's lives a lot easier if they just left this open and had you install a piece. So now we get to come in here and play the file game, which I suck at. So. Uh. There's that. Take the photo etch. Get some pliers. You don't need a fancy bender for these because they're already nicely creased. Just bend it like so. Now let's see how this fits. Always the thousand dollar question. The other ones I've done so far, I've never had it fit the first time. So I had to go in and widen it. And it looks like I need to do a little bit widening work here as well. Not much though, it's closer than I thought it would be. Almost there. Okay, so we're close. I need to widen up right up here so I can get this thing as flush as I possibly can. But other than that, I think we're looking pretty good. There we go. So that's looking how I want it. Now to go ahead and make it official. With this, I'm going to use some Ammo Black CA, which I finally got a uh, restock of. I run out of it. I really enjoy using it, so... Glad that I've addressed that situation. Basically, just apply little dabs. Where it's going to go. The thing I like about the Black Sea is it gives you a longer working time than the regular stuff. And you can see where you're putting it, which is also super useful for control purposes. There we go. That looks a shitload sharper than the plastic. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and replace one more of these and we will pick back up with more shenanigans. Okay, so I've gone ahead and hit the louvers and anywhere internal that might even potentially be visible with MRP 
fine surface primer, and then the internal bits that are potentially visible, I just went ahead and threw a quick coat of Duraluminum on. This includes the inside portion of the louvers, which are basically going to be inaccessible once everything is glued together and once paint starts. From there, I basically needed to go ahead and test the weight that I've dumped into the Allison engine buckets, which is just liquid gravity, it's little balls of, I think it's, I don't know, I think it's iron, but anyway, little tiny small balls of weight uh, filled up the Allison engine buckets, put in some super glue on top, and I needed to, before I start gluing things, test them to make sure that they will actually hold the P38 down on its nose. So this is all extremely rickety right now. Like the nacelles are not even taped to the upper wing and the center center portion, all that. They're just sitting loose. But if I tilt it back, it'll barely sit back there. And then if I bring it forward, it'll very easily sit on the nose. So I have to take it pretty much all the way back for it to sit on the tail. And that's discounting any sort of nose weight that I add up here. And I also have, if I want, the potential to add more weight behind the engine firewall. It's a bit dicey at the moment. I'm going to need to build up the center gear bay and actually put tires on this thing before I can really be comfortable with the nose weight, no tail drag situation. But I mean, currently it's right there on the bubble. So if nothing else, just a little bit of extra weight and putting it up here would definitely give me the leverage because it's further away from the center of gravity. So anyway, that is the, uh, the weight situation. So now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the center wing. Let's go ahead and start gluing up the nacelles. Okay, so I'm gonna start on the underside. Basically right down here. And I am anticipating substantial levels of cleanup because, yeah, trumpeter. Circa 2000, no less. A little bit of brute force modeling to uh, get the blood pumping. Holy shit. You're fucking kidding me. Whew. Okay. So there is one nacelle technically glued together up front. Gonna need some work over time. Okay, so all along in this series, I've been throwing out caveats that the Trumpeter P38 may not progress past the cockpit. And I've gotta admit, that's looking more and more likely with every passing minute. So when I first opened up the box, looked at the sprues, I was like, yeah, let's do this. This will be fun. Uh, you know, it's kind of like Trumpeter's P47. It's a bit rough around the edges, but totally buildable. You know, totally something that can be made presentable. And I still think that. The issue that I'm running into is I have so many other interesting projects lined up. Do I really want to spend another four, five, six months on this thing and let all those other projects languish as a result? There's also the whole, as I get more and more into the kit, the more I look at it, the more the road stretches out ahead of me in terms of the amount of work that has to go into it to do the bare metal finish that I have in mind. And I'm almost positive that the second that I commit to it to the point of no return, to me it will drop their P38L. <laughs> and then I'll be like, well, fuck. So right now I've got a bit of an internal battle going on. Do I continue on? Or do I set this aside to come back to it at a later date and go ahead and play with the cockpit? And fortunately, I am doing the cockpit on this thing, and so that is a way to kind of defer my decision. 
but just to look at, you know, on the nacelle boom arrangement itself, what all do I have to do to make this shit work? Well, we can start up here at the cowl, which, as you can see, is rather rough. The join line is not smooth. There is a step. I will have to go in here and sand that out, fill it, rescribe it, redo all these fasteners along here and along here because I mean, honestly, these are just shitty. They're terrible. A lot of these panel lines are very soft. They're the kind of thing that will not hold a wash at all, but will still stand out like a sore thumb with a bare metal finish. And you've also got shit like, you know, this is a panel line right here, but it also runs as a raised sort of mold seam right through an access hatch. <sighs> As we go back along the spine of the boom, the surface detail gets very shallow and very faint as it reaches sort of the, uh, the dorsal area. Again, more scribing, more restoring rivets or erasing rivets and then restoring them, etc. The tail has kind of that fat, shallow rivet thing that Trumpeter got really addicted to for a while. <sighs> Not happy with it. Have to install an aerial wire in here, and there is no real provision for that, so that means... Okay, so I had to cut myself off there because I was starting to ramble. But basically, getting this thing to the point where I'd be comfortable putting a bare metal finish on it is going to take a lot of work. And it's work that I'm just not sure I have the motivation to tackle right now, uh, especially with everything else hanging out right over the horizon. I mean, there's Tamiya's P38. There's my 3D printed TIE Interceptor. I've got a big ass armor project kind of waiting in the wings that I'm eager to kick out, you know, start kicking off. To me, is dropping the new F4 before too long. I mean, hell, I've even got a Kitty Hawk SH60 in the stash that is kind of calling my name too. There are a lot of things out there that I want to build, and all I can think about is how much time this thing would eat up that would keep me from tackling those. So I'm going to wind this video down here. And we're going to do a part three focused on the cockpit and playing with the Red Fox instrument panel and other assorted details. So that'll be fun to see how that looks. Uh, and I will kind of defer my decision until after I've played with the cockpit and done what I want to do there. And at that point, this thing may continue. But honestly, right now, I'm thinking it's going to go back in the box for a later date. So thanks for watching so far. Uh, you know, I... I hate to drop off on a build that I've done any videos on, but at the same time, I'd rather do it two or three in than 12 or 20 or 40 episodes in. Yeah, fuck that uh, sunk cost fallacy. Thanks for watching, and check y'all later in part three.